And so I want to kind of go into detail uh, with you about the Complementary Alternative Health Care Act mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, when we uh, we designed a health care act for doctors and unlicensed people, but the doctor part did not pass. But the unlicensed, we call it now, it's been kind of coined around the country as the Safe Harbor Act. Mm -hmm. And uh, Minnesota was the first one, and it, there are eight states now. Okay. And there are 30 states that have introduced it but haven't passed yet. And so the Safe Harbor Act says rather than going and getting a license to get permission to do a healing act from the government, mm -hmm. instead we assume all people are natural born healers in their inherent system. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they, they heal, but before they do, they give the client a client bill of rights. Okay. And that tells what their name is, mm -hmm. where their address, their telephone, what kind of modality they will be practicing, mm -hmm. um, what is the closest other option for medical care, the fact that they, uh, they are notified that they have privacy rights. And so it's a, it's a form that mm -hmm. you fill out to give to your client saying, I'm not a licensed practitioner. The state of Minnesota has not licensed me. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm not a licensed medical doctor. And then um, there's also 27 paragraphs given the <laughs> legislative process sure. of prohibited conduct. Okay. So you cannot puncture the skin, mm -hmm. give out medications, controlled substances. You can't tell people to go off their medications. Um, can't have sexual contact with your clients. Mm -hmm. So there's 27 paragraphs of prohibited acts for an unlicensed person practicing in the public domain. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually teach a class to practitioners on how to comply with that new law. And so the Complementary and Alternative Healthcare Practice Act is is um, the complaints, if you had a complaint against an unlicensed person, that mm -hmm. would go to the Department of Health. Okay. And there's actually an office for a complementary and alternative, unlicensed complementary and alternative practitioner or, so that they can take complaints from a consumer if they have one. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the best of both worlds because people then give their client bill of rights to their doctor and mm -hmm. their doctor can see what they're doing and what kind of supplements they're taking or what kind of energy treatments they're doing or mm -hmm. neurofeedback or what it, whatever it is. And I think that it really enhances the knowledge between care providers. Right. And it's pretty exciting. Yeah. It's very, I'm very proud to be in Minnesota because of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other states that have the safe harbor are California and Rhode Island. Okay. New Mexico is the most recent. Mm -hmm. Louisiana, Idaho, and Oklahoma. And Arizona has one just for homeopaths. Yes. So okay. we're, um, we're trying to promote complementary and alternative health care wellness and, and get as, as, many, as many people as possible, like all hands on deck. Yes. Because Americans really need it right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. There's obesity, there's chronic illnesses of all kinds, and the sometimes the unlicensed practitioners can spend more time with somebody to talk about lifestyle changes mm -hmm. and you know what what kind of balance to find in their life whereas you know the in the system in the conventional system you don't quite have that time to see yes. a patient maybe five or ten minutes sometimes mm -hmm. because of how they're structured mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And holistically, to look at a person, mind, spirit, and mm -hmm. body, and to take that time to see their stress right. levels and their demands of their life. Exactly. You know? And the bottom line, of course, is to get that patient well. Exactly. And it shouldn't be one way is exactly. the right way and the correct way. It's, let's look at, you know, if we can complement each other. And I know that there's a lot of hospitals now that are actually looking at healing touch. Right. And they're expanding. Right. And even Chuni Lin. He right. was just invited over mm -hmm. to Mayo Clinic, mm -hmm. Spring Forest, Qigong. Mm -hmm. You look at that and it's like, yes, because he is showing the statistics of improvement, right. not scientifically, right? but it is progressing. And right, yeah. I, and, and like in Abbott Northwestern, they have acupuncturist on hand, they have Reiki, they have Healing mm -hmm. Touch, they have the great big, you know, George Foundation Alternative Health Center in Abbott, which is a wonderful resource because if you're in that crisis mode of being in a hospital, mm -hmm. anything you can do to boost your energy or your chi or your confidence or your hope yes. uh, is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so 
um, hopefully the, the merging of the worlds yes. will become. And if, and if somebody doesn't want alternative or complementary and they just want conventional care, that's great. They mm -hmm. can have it. They can feel good about it. Yes. And they don't feel like they've been forced to do it. Mm -hmm. They have a choice. They have a choice. And, and that is so that's important. the way they go. And that's what the, it's the whole United States is actually having choices. Yeah. And yeah. So we really want to, we really want people to be involved in their healing journey. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the goal. Yes. Yeah. Because that's the bottom line is to mm -hmm. find a loved one to get better, to get back mm -hmm. their quality of life, to mm -hmm. be able to enjoy mm -hmm. what they have left, whether mm -hmm. it's the 13 year old or someone who's 66 years right. old. Right. And I, yeah. I think one of the things within the health freedom movement or the medical paradigm shift is that there are biases. There's, uh, there's people who have very, very determined that this is the best way mm -hmm. and, or this is the best way. Even, even the unlicensed traditionalists, they said, this is the only way and no conventional or the conventional say, this is the only way. So it's, it's almost like a religious fight sometimes mm -hmm. because there is that, that bias like, I know best what's good for you, mm -hmm. and you can't do anything else. This is the deal. Mm. This <laughs> is the best. And I think that one of the things that it will require as we move forward is to have much more tolerance and to understand that there is strength in diversity. Mm -hmm. that, exactly. That, you know, you, you, if you plant one tomato plant and that's all you have, that's one thing. But if you plant an, a number of different varieties and you have a, a mixture, your garden gets stronger. And I think that tolerance for each other is extremely important. Mm -hmm. As long as there's government options to shut someone down if someone's doing harm, tolerance should be the, the key word mm -hmm. in this whole shift. And then also the just the um, uh, diversity as being a strengthener in our country. I mean, that's what we were founded on is diversity. Yes, exactly. And um, we want to know that that's our strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have a few minutes left, and what I'd like for you is to educate my viewers on any thoughts that you have or how they can help to get involved with you as well. Mm -hmm. so. Well, we are extremely hardworking to help the grassroots efforts in this country mm -hmm. make this happen. And I think I, my message to um, message to all of you in, in the state of Minnesota and around the country is that you are responsible for the laws that you live by. And if you can participate in those laws, in the making of those laws, in the reflecting on those laws, in the evaluating of those laws, if you can, even if it's city council or, or county commissioner meetings or state capital, if you can be involved in any way in the making of laws, that is going to help us have laws that reflect us as a people so that the laws aren't made by someone else, but they're made by the people. They reflect the people's understanding of their culture and their evolution. So I encourage you to be involved. You can certainly be involved in our organization, which we would love to have you be involved with at nationalhealthfreedom.org. If you have any questions or would like to contact Diane Miller, please contact her at www.nationalhealthfreedom.org. Thank you so much, Diane, You're for welcome. your insight this has been on great. all this. Thanks for your work bringing yes. knowledge to wellness. Yes. And wonderful. Thank you for coming on mm -hmm. Knowledge for Wellness as well and educating my viewers. Great. Great. And the mission of Knowledge for Wellness is to inform viewers on health issues, to expose, educate, and make viewers aware, to enhance themselves and their loved ones for a better quality of life. And I hope we have provided you with more knowledge to benefit you and your loved ones. So until next time, be well and goodbye. <laughs>